The final part of our contact page is a form. And I'm going to show you how you can use Perch to create this contact form. To process forms in Perch, you need to download the free Perch Forms add-on. So you can download that from the Perch website. Once you've downloaded the Forms app and opened the zip, you can take the Perch Forms folder, which is inside Add-ons and Apps, and in your site, if you go to Perch, Add-ons, Apps, if we copy Perch Forms, and we can pop that in there. And if we go back to our code, we need to let Perch know that the app is there. So if we go to apps.php, and you see this apps list is here, and if we add Perch Forms to the list and save that file. Now if we go into your admin area, You can see now that a new menu item has appeared, that's Forms. And it says no forms have been submitted yet. So it looks like this is all well installed and we can start creating our form. So let's go to contact.php. And as we've done before, I'm going to copy out the HTML from here. And we can use that as our starting point as we create our template. We're going to need to create a new template under Content. And we'll save that as contactform.html and copy in our markup there. So let's start by adding a bit of regular perch content for the heading so that our content editor can fill that in. This would mean that you could potentially use the contact form in a few different places on the site if you wanted to. Now Perch form template fields look very much like your HTML template fields, uh, except they start with Perch so that Perch knows to process them. So we just need to turn our form into a Perch form. Uh, we can keep the ID the same. I'm going to add a method of post. And then we're going to take the action out and we're going to submit this to an app. So we're going to add the name of the app that we just installed which is Perch Forms. And then if we go down to the bottom of our form and to make this a closing Perch Form tag. So now we need to deal with the actual inputs inside our form and the labels. And we do this in very much the same way. So we turn labels into Perch labels. Let's get all of those. Let's turn this one into a perch label. And when this form is processed by perch, these will be turned back into your standard HTML elements. But by making them perch tags, perch knows it needs to do something with them. So that's the labels there we've sorted out. So now we need to sort out the inputs themselves. So we've got this one here, an input ID of name, it's a type of text. So once again, we're going to make this a perch input. I'm going to say that it's required. So the person filling in the form needs to fill this in. And I'm going to give it a label. Now this is a different label to the one that's displayed on the page, although you may use the same words. This is a label that will show up in admin or when an email is sent of this form information. So use something descriptive for the person receiving that email or looking at the data when they're downloading the form. So we've also got this email one here, so let's do that. So we can turn this into ID of email, type of email, that's the HTML5 email form field type, which will fall back to text if the browser doesn't support that type. So we implement all of those in Perch. And let's make this required as well. And give it a label for the email. And then we've also got down here, we've got this uh, text area to use for the message. So we need to change this a little bit more because Obviously that text area 
doesn't look like a perch input tag. So we turn this into a perch input. So this type is going to be text area. Make it required and we'll give it a label of message. It's worth noting that all of the perch tags need to have this, this self-closing if they don't have a closing tag like form. So form has a closing tag, so that, that has a closing tag. Anything that doesn't have a closing tag needs to have this forward slash and then closing, a bit like an XML or an XHTML tag if you've come across those. So if you're working in HTML5 and you, you're turning a form like this into a perch form and you don't have, have self-closing form fields, just make sure to remember to do that for perch so that it can parse the form properly. So I'm going to need to have a submit button here. We actually haven't got a proper submit button here at all, so let's add one. And so that's all of our form fields. The final thing I want to add is a success message because if people submit the form, they want to know that that's happened, that it's gone off and has been successfully submitted. So we can add that inside this perch success block. So once you've added perch success tags, you can add anything you like in here. So first thing I'll do is add some styling. So a div and my styling is I'm going to use alert and success. And then I think what I'll do is I'll add some perch content here. And that means that the uh, administrator can add whichever content they like to let the person know what's happened or what's going to happen next. Make that required. We want to make sure we do have a message there, don't we? So that's all of our form. So we can now go back to contact.php. We can delete the markup that's now part of our template. And we can put in a new perch region. This should all be starting to look quite familiar to you now. And then reload the page. So the form disappears. And reload the admin. We've got our new contact form showing up. Let's find that region and say contact form. Just added some content there. Go back to the page and here's our form. And here's our success message. So now if we go back now if we go to the Forms menu item, here's our form, and here's the message that I put in. If you go to Form Options, you'll see you have other options here. Uh, you can give the form a different title, you can store the response, which is the default. You can set a file upload path if people are allowed to upload information. So if you're creating a form where people can say, upload a CV. And if you've got a functioning mail server, you can send the response via email. And you can change some things about the email template as well. So that's how you add simple forms using Perch.